This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Welcome to the Ramble with Alex Bennett. That's me. And we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I really screwed up. We started recording this, and uh, uh, lately I'm just kind of out of it. And I wasn't actually recording the picture. I was recording my logo swirling around. And I just noticed it. And we had to start the thing over again. And I hate doing this because uh, it, Steve is so good to us doing these things all the time then I hate to have to do this. And we've done this on a couple occasions we've had to start over again, right? Yeah, a couple occasions. You, you actually erased a whole episode. Did I really? Yeah. Oh, boy. There was a time when I didn't do that, you know. There's just too much for me to look for here. Anyway, how you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. How are you, yeah, Alex? Yeah, we were, we were having a very good conversation, Steve and I, about longevity. Now, right. like, tell them about your longevity in your family, because this was fascinating. On your mother's side... My mother's side, they died very young. My mother was 59. Yeah. I know, 46. What did she die of? Uh, cancer. Really? What kind of cancer? Lung cancer. Did she smoke? Yes. Oh. But even if you smoke, probably that age for lung cancer is not in the, in the cards. Right, 46. Yeah. yeah, but some people, you know, are just more prone to cancer than other people. And my nephew was 22. What did he die of? Heart attack. Just was going around doing his business, and next thing you know, he's on the ground dead. No, he was uh, sleeping. Really? Yeah, I wonder, yeah. I wonder about that. If you die in your sleep, that... that you know that you know that old prayer you told, taught kids. Uh, Dear God, right. love me, regard me while I sleep. If I die before I wake, right, take my soul or something to take or whatever. And I'm going. Well, in some cases, he may should have said that prayer before he went to sleep. I mean, <laughs> but to go to to die in your sleep. I mean, you don't even right. know you died. I mean, I imagine it's the most pleasant way to go, right? I would imagine he didn't feel anything. I wonder if you're like having a dream and all of a sudden you get the heart attack in your sleep and uh, you, you don't finish the dream. Somehow in the afterlife, do you finish the dream? I have no idea what goes on there. Well, nobody's come back, Alex. Nobody's come back to tell us if there is an afterlife. Well, there, you know, there are people who've died t uh, legally, you know, legally died and then came back to life. You know, so, I mean, those people, oh, they talk about seeing the white light, you know, and walking towards the light and uh, stuff like that. But then they, they but they, none of them ever say, hey, I, uh, you know, I saw heaven or I saw right. God or, uh, you know, whatever. I saw my relatives. Hmm? I saw my relatives. Y yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm just thinking that... Uh, uh, they never come back and say that kind of stuff. They usually no. just say, you know, I, I went towards this light and all of a sudden I was back again, you know. Um, but I, I just, you know, I just, but, but anyway, so then you had, now here's what he's told me, and this is amazing. So they're all really young, 22, right. is too young to die of a heart attack. I don't know what, right. I don't know what kind of life he led, you know, what he did that might have exacerbated it. Or if he just had a bad ticker and you're 22 and you don't go to the doctors. You don't have a regular yeah, checkup. They said even if they caught it, he would have needed a heart transplant. That bad? Yeah, his heart was like enlarged. But you see, but nobody probably even looked at that because at 22 he doesn't go to the doctor every year. Right. You know? When your mother was 49, she goes to the doctor every 46. 46. 46. 46. She goes to the doctor every now and then, and you know, then she comes down with the cancer. Right. Uh, my father. Her birthday's, her birthday's tomorrow. Real? Oh boy, 
that must be hard on you. Yeah. Because I remember you were really upset about your mother's death. Yeah. I think I knew you when she died, actually. No, I was a teenager. You were a teenager, okay. But you, there was something, wasn't there something about you putting a tombstone up or something right, like right, that? Right, right, right. The comedy competition, I came in fourth and I had enough money to put a headstone on my mother's grave. Really? I still haven't put one on my mother's grave. Really? Yeah, I just never got around to it, you know. She's lying there next to Dad who's got a tombstone. So they know it's the Shoresmans, you know. <laughs> uh, but my father, no, my father, his tombstone is there. Uh, it's very, you know, so I went back to it. And I thought, oh, you know, I remember my father's tombstone as being this big tombstone, right? Right. And it was a very tiny tombstone. And maybe it's because I was a kid and it just looked larger to me. Probably. It was a very tiny tombstone. And, um,. I just felt I don't know I should I should I should have bought it years ago for my mother because it would have been cheaper than it is now probably. Oh yeah, you of know. course it would have been. And, and what do they charge for a tombstone? Do you what would you, you remember what you paid? This is like nineteen eighty five. Yeah, I think it was around seven hundred dollars. Really? Okay. Then, well, but today it'd probably be like two thousand. Probably, at least. And and it's, you know, all it is, ladies and gentlemen, is a marker on a grave. Right. You know? And somehow people feel like, because they really love the person, they want to memorialize them and have a tombstone on their grave. Well, what happened, Alex, is she didn't have a headstone. She just had the plaque. Yeah. And I went back one winter to her grave, and I couldn't find it. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I can find mine. My, because it's right next to my father's. Right, but yeah. I, I couldn't find it. So me and my me and my brothers bought the headstone. It wasn't just me. It was me and my two brothers pitched in. Yeah, okay. Well, it wasn't a lot of money for a tombstone, I guess. No. You know. Um, but I was thinking, that, you know, my joke has been over the years, I was thinking of tearing down my father's tombstone and putting up one tombstone over both graves, you know. Right. It'd say, here lies Ruth and Alex Schwarzman in regular letters, you know, and then in incredibly large letters, parents of Alex Bennett. <laughs> uh, and the reason is, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I want some publicity out of it, you know? Is that right? Yeah, I want some advertising. Is that I tell you, my, my grandmother mm -hmm. passed away at 104, and my grandfather passed away at 102. Okay, that's the other side of the family we were talking right. about. That's my father's side and of the family. And they, they have the longevity. They just won't die. Yeah. Now, I wonder where you, you know, people tell me, because my mother died in 100, right? Right. Um, and people say to me, oh, well, you're going to live to be a long life because your mother lived to be 100, but my father lived to be 59. Right. So do you do a mean average? Or is it, you know, is your mother, does it, do they pass the long life gene on to you? You know, the is father? Your mother or your father? Yeah, or your father, you know. So uh, were you close to your father too? No. No. So, you know, but maybe he left you a gene that will, you know, do some maybe. nice stuff, you know. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, you know, because at my age of 83, I just wake up every morning and say, what is it that's going to get me? You know, well, I mean, I'm in that, you know, I'm in that area where, I mean, of course, you're always in that area. I mean, we have friends, you and I, you know, I mean, we had Bill Hicks, great comedian, right. died at 32. Right. Of pan pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Now, I don't know what caused it. He did live kind of a wild life. He smoked a lot. He drank a lot. He did all that. Right. But I don't know that at 32 you can do that much damage to yourself yet that you get pancreatic cancer. But he died at 32. But I find that comedians seem to live longer. They seem to live long lives. But, you know, there are misadventures. Bob Saget right. was in, what, his 50s, I think? I think so. Yeah. Um but then again, you, you go to people like Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner 
and uh, George Burns. Right. Uh, Je- uh, you know, they all lived to be, uh, I think, I think. In, did Burn- in their 90s, at least. Burns, I think, made it to 100, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you're talking there about a, a profession, I think, where people can live longer. But we have had so many comics that we also know that died young. Right. You know, and um, and it's tragic, too, in most of those cases. Uh, um, what's his name? I'm trying to remember his name now. Another comedian who died, but he died in a car crash. Oh, Sam Kennison. No, not Kennison. Um, uh, 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 oh God, I you know he's close. It was a close friend of mine, and I forget his name right now. But anyway, he well, what was happening is he was driving, and he, he well, he wasn't driving. He was in a car, and his daughter was driving, and the daughter pulled off the road or something and crashed, and it killed him. Now, what was amazing about that was. He died in a car crash, but he had all kinds of forms of cancer. He was having it ready to have an, a, I think, like a liver transplant or a kidney transplant. I mean, it was one thing after another. Uh, and, Who was it? Uh, what's his name? Oh, God. You know, I'll remember it right after we're through here. When I'm under pressure for names, uh, he used to do my show all the time. He was, what was one of his bits? Uh, he was he was always an edgy comic. He was always a dirty comic. I always I always just like to say about him that the setup to all his jokes were dirty, but his punchline wasn't. Oh really? Yeah. I, one of his bits that he did was he he said um, uh, I called my father and I and then he said I told him something was horrible and whatever and my father says Oh, oh Robert Schimmel. Schimmel. Yeah, I got you on speakerphone. Yeah, Robert Schimmel. Schimmel. I mean, this guy. I, I knew him every time I'd see him. He said, "Well, I just can't. They just found out I had this cancer, or they just right. found out I had that cancer." Uh, he wrote a book called "Cancer on Five Dollars a Day" or something like that. And he just, you know, he just had one problem after another. He, his, his life is so tragic that it would make a movie. Uh, you remember, he had a son. Who had cancer? Oh, right. A young son. I mean, like, got cancer at five years old. Right. And he went on the road constantly to make enough money to pay for the treatment of this kid. Who right. and he would take the kid whenever he could, wherever he was going, so he could show him the world and the wonderful life out there and so on. The kid eventually died, but I mean, he just absolutely did everything he could to keep this kid alive. Right. And so that was tragedy number one. Then he, then his wife divorced him. I think he married the babysitter, one of those cliches. Uh, I think she divorced him. Uh, he then came down with cancer. I can't remember what kind. They operated, blah, 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 blah. He's better, right? Then he goes on the road, and then he comes down with another form of cancer. And then he comes out with a t- kidney dif- dysfunction. One thing after another health-wise. So I'm just waiting to get the call, hey, you know what, Bob Schimmel just died, right? right? I get that call, Bob Schimmel just died. Well, what got him? And they said his daughter was driving a car with him in it, and it crashed, and it killed him. And I'm going, that's just bizarre. Right. You know, because you expect to get the call, oh, the cancer got him, the kidney got him, the this right. got him, the that got him. No. You know, I mean, I loved, I loved Robert. I, when I was, you know, out of work at in San Francisco, like I got let go by the radio station, he would call me constantly to see how I was doing. Was that right? Yeah, really nice guy that way. He, and I mean, yeah. I loved him dearly. You know, nothing like his act. Nothing like his act. His act was dirty, edgy, you know, but a, a, it was a great act. I mean, I don't. Oh yeah. I, I, you've seen, you saw it. You know, 
I mean, it's it's interesting that it's it's sad that we lost a lot. We have lost a lot of special comics, and they're usually edgy comics. That's the funny part about. It. But we lost them young. I mean, we lost Schemmel, and we lost uh, uh, Hicks. A uh, Hicks. And we lost Warren Thomas. We lost Warren Thomas. Uh, Warren Thomas. In case people don't know, Warren Thomas was a comic who was. He was maybe the best riffer, wouldn't you say? The best riffer you ever oh, yeah. seen? Yeah. This guy could riff with the best of them, okay? Right. Uh, and he came to New York. He was working here. Uh, and he died here in New York. And I occasionally had him on my show in, in, when I was at Sirius XM. And uh, we would get together occasionally. And all of a sudden, Warren Thomas is dead. Well, he'd been dead for about three weeks before they found him in the apartment. Right. You know? He had HIV. Well, he had, he had AIDS. He, had, he, he, had AIDS. He, was, he wasn't gay, folks. He didn't get it from sex. He, he got it from a blood transfusion. At San Francisco's hospital. Right. And, and um, he, got, uh, he got phlebitis, I think it was, and he needed a blood transfusion. And they right. gave him a blood transfusion, and this was before they knew that the blood supply was tainted with AIDS. Right. Uh, and he got some AIDS injected into him, blood, and he came down with AIDS. Um, but what happened was is that while he had AIDS, he got down to like, you know, three T cells or something like that, some amazing amount. And you're next to death when you got three T cells. Because right. you have no immunity at all. And all of a sudden, they came up with all these medicines that you could take and swallow and you know, take every day. And he started doing that, and his T-cell shot up to like 200 or something like that. And he was on the mend, you know. He had these, you know, these sarcomas all over his entire body at right. one point. And he got, um, he, he literally came back from AIDS. I mean, when I saw him back here in New York, he looked really healthy. He looked like he had beaten it, you know. Uh, he was one of the lucky ones um, because it was a time when they were still trying to find what will work, you know, to stop right. this thing if you get it. Um, and he was, uh, I can't remember, he was doing a bunch of things here in New York and trying to get his career going again. And uh, then I didn't hear from him, you know, for a while. And then one day I hear he's dead. They found him in his apartment dead. And it wasn't a, a, I think, due to any kind of misadventure. I never, and it, nobody ever, did anybody ever come up with what he died of? <laughs> died of AIDS. The, you're saying he died of AIDS, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of, it, I, I felt really bad about that because we all loved Warren. You know, oh, yeah. Warren was the best. And now you know who's in the hospital? This is <laughs> wonderful, folks. This is what two old guys do when they're talking. You know, well, I know so and so's dead now, and you know, whatever. Uh, Pearl's in the hospital. Yeah, what's he in the hospital? I don't for? know. Somebody said they went over to his Facebook page, and he was uh, he was having problems. I mean, I used to have do with him what I do with you all the time, but he just uh, he his, his computer broke, and then he had to do it with his iPhone. And it never looked good, and it was very difficult to do it with him. Um, plus, he doesn't have the depth you or Bubbles have. You Is know? that right? Yeah, well, yeah, he's he's a riffer again. He's just a plain, utter riffer, and right. and so you just have to follow the riff, right? But that that's kind of a rich rich mixture, right? Right. So, so I I haven't talked to him in a while. And uh, then I, oh, somebody calls me and says, have you seen him? I go online, Facebook, uh, he says he's in the hospital. And I go there and there's just a picture of him in the hospital and there's a video of him saying, well, I'm in the hospital, but they're treating me well and I'm getting good. And he doesn't say what went wrong. No, he had trouble breathing. And I know they gave him morphine, so he must've been in pain. Well, there must've been some kind of pain associated with whatever he went to the hospital for. Right. It was it morphine or some other drug, but it was very close to that. Like no, they gave him morphine because he even he even posted it. Oh, really? Okay. So, and when did you look at it last? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, that's when I looked, and he said I, they gave me some kind of drug. Maybe it was morphine, and 
you know, that I'm feeling great, you know. But I mean, what what's happening there, you know? Yeah, what's he in the hospital for? I have no idea because, you know, usually if I were in the hospital, I'd say, well, I was rushed to the hospital. Oh, you hear that noise? They're, drill noise. they're drilling on the building. And maybe I've got a very directional mic here, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, I, um, you know, I mean, I, I, if I went to the hospital, I would probably, probably say, hey, I'm in the hospital. Don't worry, I got rushed here because blah, 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 blah. Right. Right? Right. There's nothing like that. He said, well, I'm here in the hospital and I'm um, getting some treatment. I think he maybe had some apparatus in his nose. I can't remember. He remember. had breathing. He had oxygen. Yeah, it was oxygen. And uh, I just said uh, to myself, well, come on, tell me what's wrong. And he never, in the video or anywhere in his posting, said, I went to the hospital because I felt this or I felt that or, you know, they're checking out. My I think he went because he, he had trouble breathing. Really? Huh. That's, you know, that, well, anyway. So we have another person who's sick. And then, of course, you had the wonderful story of Tom, uh, Sam Kinnison, who, uh, you know, we never thought, we thought he would die of drugs. We just didn't realize he'd be in somebody else. You know, the driver of the car, the car, he got hit, he got hit by a car. Yeah, but he, he, was, he was on drugs at the time, too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. But it wasn't his fault. No. It wasn't, he got killed by his target audience. He got killed by his target audience. Was that a joke going around at the time? No, I think I just said it. Well, that's a beautiful statement. He died from somebody who was part of his target audience. Wow. I mean, that, and he died out in the middle of the road, I think. Right, right. Out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And he, his last words, do you remember what his last words were? He looked Not up. He, he looked up at the sky, and he said, "I understand. I understand." What does that mean? Well, maybe he saw something we have yet to see. You know, I mean, maybe uh, you know, but it was almost like he died in a sort of weird bliss because he had either come to a realization or somebody was calling him or uh, whatever, but he, his last- Or he was really high. Or he was really high. He was high at the time? I didn't, never heard that. You know. Yeah, I think they found drugs in the system. Yeah. I could, be, I could be wrong, but I think they did. Yeah, yeah. And that was kind of a sad death, because I, I, I always liked Sam. Yeah, me too. You know, uh, he, if he liked you, he treated you very well. Right. And if he hated you, well, like he hated Mark Marin, he peed in his bed. Right. Yeah. You know, if he could, if he hated somebody, there was no stopping him. Right. You know, but if he liked you, he was a very decent guy, you know, and he, there were a lot of comedians he had in kind of his posse that he carried for quite a while, you know. Oh, yeah. Were you part of that group? No, Pearl... Who was? You were part of it, maybe? No, I was part of the original Wild Wilds of Comedy. Yeah, yeah. When, and, it, when it first began. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, went from private planes, and then as his popularity weaned a little bit, they were taking tour buses. But I wasn't part of that. Yeah. But still, I mean, he, he, he kept a lot of comics going at that time. You know. Paid very well. See? You know. So and and yet you get a guy like that to and he dies, doesn't make sense, you know. But you know, and I don't know how many people will really remember Sam Kinison in retrospect or to, uh, J uh, uh, Hicks. I mean, Hicks's comedy should live forever. Some of that stuff was brilliant, just right. brilliant. But, you know. Or Mitch Hedgroom. Huh? Or Mitch H Hedgroom. Mitch Hagrim? Uh, Mitch? Oh, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I know who you're trying to say. I, I never knew him much, you know. 
No, I didn't know him at all. Yeah. But, you know, um, I'm a, uh, the old comedy term is I'm dying up here. So, uh, you know, uh, some of them take it too literally. But what the hell? Hey, listen, we've run out of time. You ready for that? Yeah, right. It's about the time they're starting to drill outside here. You know? But uh, let me get my calendar. Yeah, well, wait a minute. We're not. I we got to finish here before we do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't rush off yet. We got to close this. We no, we're not finished. I'm now about ready to say, ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Bye, folks. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, 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 Steve Kravitz. Good having Steve here, and uh, he'll be with us again next week. Uh, uh, I, I like, I, he, you know, I like these people because they're conversational. People like Bubbles and Kravitz and... Uh, and uh, oh, by the way, strange, uh, So, uh, Will Durst who we talk to occasionally, as you know, Will had a stroke, okay? That's for starters. Uh, the other day I get a, a thing from GoFundMe where um, um, his wife Debbie, who is a gem, okay, an absolute gem, um, uh, who's been just by his side every day during this whole ordeal, which is almost three years now he has been in a hospital bed or in a nursing room bed. and. Uh, uh, the thing she sends is that he just had two carcinomas removed from his face, and there was a picture of him with a bandage here and a bandage up here. And I'm going, you know, as if a stroke isn't enough, you know, to suddenly say, oh, yeah, it's uh, here, have, have a carcinoma while you're at it. I mean, geez, almighty. I don't know, you know. I, uh, I've lived long enough to see people I love and care about get sick you know and that that's that that's people say what what's good about being 83 and about the only thing good about being 83 is you're 83 okay you made it this long what's bad about it well there are a lot of things bad about it uh, every other day there's another doctor telling you well you might have cancer you know but barring that the other thing that's terrible about it is that uh, it, 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 I, I often wondered, you know, we always run, wondered why old people were cranky, and I finally figured out, realized why we're cranky, is because we have all kinds of aches and pains, you know? If it isn't just something like simple arthritis, it's something like my wife's situation with her back, and uh, she just gets really grouchy, right? So I, I you know, there, there are very negative things about getting to be an old person, Okay, but what the hell? Um, there are t there are good things and there are bad things. But the worst thing is having to see things happen to people you love, like as I said, some of the people we mentioned today with uh, Steve Kravitz, comedians that I really cared about. Uh, Warren Thomas, what a gem, absolute wonderful guy. Um, um, uh, Sam Kinison, who was always very good to me and I liked very much. And uh, we, uh, you know, he always came by to see me at my radio show when he was in San Francisco. Uh, but, uh, uh, Bill Hicks, probably one of the greatest comics it's been my pleasure to ever work with. I mean, a lot of people always said, uh, oh, this next comic, this comic is the uh, new Lenny Bruce. And, you know, they weren't the new Lenny Bruce. You know, they called him, they said that Kinnison was the new Lenny Bruce. He wasn't even close. It, his whole act was different and came from a different direction. The guy who came closest was Bill Hicks because there was outrage in his act and there was, there was uh, it, it just had all the hallmarks of what I loved about Lenny Bruce and what I got to love about Bill Hicks. So to see people like them die, Bill at 32, you know, uh, um, um, Robert Schimmel, who we mentioned, who, who I couldn't remember the name of, and Rob, Robert was very close to me. 
uh, Bob Schimmel uh, was just a wonderful guy and a great comedian. I mean, these are people who had true, absolute talent. Warren Thomas, one of the most talented, as we said, riffers that I ever, I ever came across. Um, and, and so the sad part about getting old is you see these people pass. Like today, you know, you, you sit there, you watch television, so you get an old thing on your watch. Oh, guess, oh, guess who it just said died, you know? And then you look at it and you go, I used to jerk off to her. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Raquel Welch died today, 82 years old. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, she was, she was it back in the day. I mean, what, 1,000 years B.C. or whatever that thing she did where she wore the fur bikini? Uh, wow. You know, but you suddenly see that Raquel Welch died, and it's not because I'm so young. It's because I lived long enough to see her die. And so you, you start seeing your, the passage of time here is the passage of people, and it's, uh, it's um, I don't know, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. I wish it were. But uh, what the hell? Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I don't want to complain anymore, you know. Uh, but I just have some new medical problems, okay, they are being dealt with. And, you know, it just it goes on and on and on, you know. But I'll tell you what I hate most of all about getting older is you go to, if you're young and you go to a doctor, and say, oh, I don't know, a blood test comes back and you've got low platelets or something for one reason or another. They just go, well, just do this and drink a lot of this and have some of this and you're going to be okay. When it happens at 83, go back and get the test again. Oh, we got to make sure it's nothing terrible, you know. So the latest thing I'm dealing with is a, test, a blood test that came back where something was a little off scale. So now they're sending me to a hematologist oncologist. Oncologists deal with people who have cancer. I probably don't. My doctor said there's maybe a 10% chance that there's something wrong here. He said, but I want to send you to this guy to be, be on the safe side. Now, what he's saying is not that he wants to be on the safe side. He doesn't want to get sued if he's wrong. Okay? So he passes it off to another guy. And I imagine the higher you up you are, like if you're an oncologist, you probably have to have more, more um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, medical insurance than you would have to have if, say, oh, I don't know, you were uh, just, oh, you just, you know, did something simple that wasn't life, uh, life threatening. So anyway, so you know, I, I got to go to another doctor, and you know, I, I I get tired of that. I don't want to spend my time going to doctors. I mean, maybe I just better die, you know, and then that'll solve the whole problem. But anyway, let me uh, let me uh, admit the people here, and uh, let me put them up here uh, as they come in. There's Jeff Stein and Brian Neary is uh, there. And of course, there is uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charles. How are you this evening? Good. Okay. So, what is your shirt for today? Oh, that's just "May the Force Be With You." Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Just a just... time's acceleration. May the Force be with you. Hmm? I see. Okay. All right. I was thinking this was like May Fourth. <laughs> I missed it or something. Could but, be, but, I don't know. yeah. Boy, you got some great shirts. Some great shirts. Here comes uh, here comes Jeff with the assistance of Pamela. Uh, they said uh, Warren Thomas uh, complications of leg of a uh, leg surgery or something. Yeah, leg infection. So no, he must have had a leg infection and then you no, know, had no. He he had uh, he had phlebitis, hmm. is what he had, which you get in your legs. And yeah. uh, so they gave him a, a blood transfusion, and that was at San Francisco Hospital. And in that day, they were just, you know, they were just taking blood from anybody, mm -hmm. right? Well, a lot of that blood was tainted because it came from a heavily gay population. And so he got uh, uh, the tainted blood, and um, he really had AIDS badly, but he was on the cusp of where they started having these 
you know, cocktails that they made up, these, these uh, medical cocktails that were helping people who had AIDS avoid dying from it. And, yeah. and he got better and better. And by the time I saw him the last time, he, he looked in great shape, you know. Uh, but, oh, man, it was terrible for him for a while. Yeah, but, so 2005. So, yeah, he... So he got past that, and then all of a sudden, one day, I mean, we got word that he was dead and that he had died. Um, and, and this was the, the horrible part about it. He, he had died uh, in, his, in his apartment here in New York and was lying there dead for about three days before they found him wow. you know so i you know it, it's it's that kind of thing you know the it bothers me because they were people i really liked and loved you know and uh, uh there are some comedians if they dropped dead i wouldn't even have cared but these were people i cared about you know yeah yeah so anyway so how are you all you guys all doing tonight <laughs> I'm all right. You're all right? You know, I'm, I'm so well. yeah. My uncle called. I can't take this guy. Who? Your uncle called? You I can't him. take him out because I should have bounced the call. He, he infuriates me. He's cheap to no end, this guy. If you ever met him, you would so Is this the guy out. you worked for? Exactly. I had to hang up on him. I couldn't take him anymore. Oh, really? Uh, I mean, did you just really hang up on him or just say, I have to? Well, go? I said I had to go because my brother wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the guy, but he's, you ever talk to like a family member? And it's like, he is an asshole. You know you what know I what love I about Tony? Tony is, if you've never been to New York, <laughs> yeah. Tony is so New York. Yeah, it is. It's true. not to be believed. It is. And everybody who knows and, me and, out of and, New York. And here, like here's a show you can call up. You can talk about the world around us and what's happening in the world around us and how how uh, how horrible, for instance, the earthquake was in Turkey. And immediately <laughs> yeah. the first thing out of Tony's mouth is, boy, do I hate my uncle. Can, can I say something about what annoyed me about him? And I wanted to ask your opinion. <laughs> <on> <laughs> okay, I called Shekhar. I left a message for him. And I got to discuss them. You know, I was walking to the post office today, right, to mail out some comics. Mm -hmm. So I go into the post office. It's like two blocks down from me, right? So I go in. I'm coming out, and somebody yells, "Magno, Tony!" So I turn around. And it's like, oh, it's this kid. I work. Uh, this kid worked in my uncle's place at the time. He was 14. The kid, mm -hmm. and he said, "Dad had passed away. Now he's a school teacher. So he's teaching right over here." He says. How's everything going? It's, it's going good. So he lives in Jersey. He's married two kids. So his mm -hmm. name is Anthony, too. So I used to call him Little Anthony. So he's kind of like a little brother to me, right? Mm -hmm. So I walked him to school because he was going in. Little so Anthony? Did, me, did, did, did you call your, your posse the Imperials? What was... Uh, uh, no, he was just... He's a good kid. He's that's, smart. that's a really old joke, folks, that oh, only, oh. Uh, only Charlie got. So, so listen that's to this, what bothered me. Yeah. Ready? He was talking about... You remember when he used to come to the place? He was only 14, the kid. So he used to work there. And he was making hat boxes. He used to like talking. We were like, I was like an older brother to him, I guess. So I says, and I said, he, you know what he told me? He goes, you know when your uncle paid me? He says, yeah. I said, you know, he paid you on Friday. Right? He says, no, he wrote me a check. I says, wait a second. You were 14 and you had to pay taxes? <laughs> <laughs> I said, this cheap fuck. I said, Alex, he worked 10 hours a week to get after school, right? Yeah. You couldn't give him $40 out of your pocket or 50 bucks. I got disgusted. All day, my whole day was off the hook for this guy. He, he messaged me going home and went over the bridge. Are you over it? I says, I'm not over it. I says, the guy's an asshole, I said. Wow. Well, I hope he's listening tonight. And uh... Oh, God. I know what I told my brother. Arnold outlived Brock Cole Welch. I said that to him. He said, you don't stop. I says, no. Yeah. Well, I we... can't believe Alex, would you have paid a kid 14? Wouldn't you just throw money out of your pocket and gave it to him? Probably, I don't know what I would have done. You know, I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times when I did stuff with people, and I only had to give them like fifty bucks for what they did, uh, I don't write a check. You know, I mean, he's fourteen. I mean, come on. I mean, no, really? No, I mean, a, I, I tip my uh, my yeah, uh, right? my super, and I take it out of my pocket, like a twenty dollar bill or yeah, forty. Yeah, exactly. You know? This yeah. guy's writing a check and handed. I says. Oh, he says, I says, are you joking me? He says, no, I thought you knew. Says, no, I didn't make the checks out. I was just a worker there. I said, what a cheap. I mean, the kid price. probably didn't make enough money to pay taxes. Exactly. He did. It was just a point that he had to have something taken. Like, that, you know, should I? It was just to me, like, hand the kid cash in an envelope. I mean, really. Hmm. What a cheap fuck this guy is. Yeah. I can't take him out. I can't. 
He's not Jewish, is he? You're, okay. No, please. Oh, okay, good because Italian. We, it, it, yeah, he, he's he's yeah. worse, Alex. He's an Italian. Jew. What do you mean he's worse? Jews aren't terrible. Okay, no, I don't mean it like that. He they get a you get a bad rap. I I worked with a lot of Jewish people, and they were never cheap to me, never. Well, I mean, I love, you know, uh, uh, first of all, in order to be a cheap Jew, you have to have money. Uh, do, you know, that, I was, do you know, listen to this moment. My mother passed away. Mm -hmm. One of our old girlfriends who's Jewish. Do you know she sent cats to the house? I opened the package. I she got, had I, like a, I, I got to tell you a great story. Cats uh, Deli. I was like, I don't no. believe it. She never forgets okay, this okay. moment. I had, uh, last night, I had my business manager. Well, this is the first year in a couple of years because of COVID that he hasn't done it. But they have, they come over to my house. He mm -hmm. comes to New York and he comes over to my house. And then he and his wife cook a dinner and they invite oh, yeah. their friends over and we have a, like a big dinner, but one which they have prepared. And it's okay. always delicious. I mean, uh, they're both very good cooks, okay? So uh, they came over and did this last night and she's German. Okay. Uh, and uh, he is. Uh, um, about 25 years her senior, I had something like that. Yeah, 25 years her senior. So she had to tell her mother that she had married a guy who was 25 years older than she was. And she's from Germany, okay? Uh -huh. And so her mother had a, a long time to get over that one. The other part she didn't tell him is that she was he was Jewish. And yeah, that, yeah. That was a big thing. And and I said, so what happened when you told him that you told her that you were, you know, that he was Jewish? She said, he said, well, they're people too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a black thing. She had been part of. She had been part of the Hitler Youth. Her mother. Oh my God. And this oh, is wow. why she got out of the house early. You know, she didn't want to be around these ex Nazis. <laughs> I guess you it know, doesn't go but, into But it, no. when, when he, she found out he was Jewish, she said, well, they're people, too. Yeah, I mean. So, I, so these people come over and cook a meal at your house? Mm -hmm. They don't have a microwave in their kitchen? Oh, that's not fun. What's I, the I, joke I, there? I don't get it. Uh, they, they could have had their friends over their house. They don't and, have a house here. They live oh, in California. Oh, I, now I got I, it. I, yeah. Okay. Missed that part. I was busy listening to Stephen Kravitz and didn't realize. Yeah, it was good. Gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I get annoyed with certain things. I guess you're right. As you get older, you get it. I'm getting more annoyed with certain things. You're right. Certain people you got to do without after a while. I think. Well, I know. I mean, I know. A good example: of getting annoyed with people. For instance, is me and you. Yeah. yeah, and that's rightfully so. Remember, <laughs> you told me don't call this number again unless it's yeah. one. <laughs> I mean, you, you know. I'm joking. No, I, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't. I know. <laughs> I told Chucky, he said, no, he wasn't joking. <laughs> if it's a point, you can call me that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was funny the way you said it, though. But <laughs> it's just amazing that you can call this show and talk about anything, and the first thing out of your mouth, before anybody else here even says anything, is, my uncle's a jerk. I know. You know, he, and that's typical Alex, New you York. Met this guy, you would joke about Okay, him. enough with your uncle. I know. May, may he live a short life. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, you're not. You know what bothered me too, guys? When my mom had passed away, I told this to Shaggy Alex. We couldn't go because it was the height of COVID almost again, that second wave. You know what he said at the cemetery? So I guess we're not going for lunch. Lunch? Nobody's taking him to lunch. Dude, I, enough with your uncle. I know. You know what? God rest my mother. She's going to dream to me. Wait, 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 wait. Did, you dr did you drink coffee tonight? I had two cups. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> mighty. One. This is my mother's doing. Okay. So much. Why do you have coffee so late? Yeah, why not have another cup, Tom, hey, while you're at it? What do you think I do? But I don't yeah, drink. Yeah, but you, you need to be you need to be awake. We don't need Tony awake. <laughs> well, I no, I just I, I just do a little bit of I actually put it in the refrigerator and drink it the next morning. So, you know. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, Charlie had a good line about uh, Raquel Welch. What was that? I think that fur bikini kickstarted my puberty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, as she got older, she was kind of like, 
Did you ever see her on that episode of Seinfeld where he's got to tell her to, that he, she has to give him the Tony back or something like that? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Vaguely. And she like, oh, he has a Tony that he got. Uh, Kramer. That was it. And he had to go in and tell her something. That, and she broke his Tony. Do you remember that episode? Yeah, that sounds she, painful. Yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of felt when I watched that that maybe they had her like that because that's the way she really is, you know? Italian, so. Yeah. Most of, never mind. <laughs> yeah, now, who, 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 who do you guys was hotter? Raquel Welch or Ursula Andrus? Who? Who? Yeah, really. Who? You don't know Ursula Andrus? No. Mm. Oh God. Am I that Jacqueline old? Jacqueline Smith was Jacqueline Smith was my uh, my hottie. Oh, my sister loved the Charlie's Angels. Yeah, Jacqueline Smith was gorgeous. Let me ask you, Tony. You know who I'm talking about when I say <clears throat> Ursula Andrus, right? I have to see a picture of her. I don't know. Did you ever see the movie? Doctor No. Did you ever see Doctor No? I'm not a big James Bond fan like you and Shaggy, my brother. I didn't ask you. Ago. Anyway. I didn't see it, no. No, she's the woman that comes out of the water. I don't. Need, I didn't see that movie. It's a, one of the most famous shots in films. Really? Uh, i got to watch that. Now, what's the name of it? I'll, no. He's got what, the what, 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 what about Phoebe Cates coming out of the water? That was a good That was nothing. Nothing. Cameron Cro I love Cameron Crowe. Nothing compared to favorite. Ursula Andress. Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I'll find her Slyandrus online here. Ursula I got a there, was already a guy, there was already a guy jerking off when uh, Phoebe Cates I'm addicted, out of water. Alex. You got me hooked on that show, The Last of Us. Yep. I just watched the last the latest episode. Wasn't that a great one, Charlie? Oh, yeah, but I mean, it. Uh, I was shocked at the ending. It's not your uncle, Tony. I know. Why were you, why were you shocked at the ending? In the, uh, I, I, okay. I, 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 I don't want to give it back. away. You got me hooked on it. No, that. I, take that, show, I take that back because the people who die in that episode are in the game. Oh, I never played the game. And, and they know. die. Oh, they do. And you okay, feel, so I felt, game. I felt, mm -hmm. I felt that grief that you feel that you might have felt watching that yeah, episode. Yeah, like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a really good show. Oh, yeah. Oh, it really was. Wait a minute. Hold yeah, I gotta, I, I'm only the second. I got to get through a few more. But and Adrian the kid is good with... in it, the girl. What? I like the girl, the kid actor. She's good, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, she's great. She's fantastic. Oh, yeah, she's great. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I got to find her. I, I got to find the right shot of Ursula Andrews here. Here we, go. here we go. Here we That's go. Show. Here we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ursula Andrew. Wait, wait a minute. I just, I just, I double clicked on the picture and I didn't get that picture. That's that's strange. Usually you get the picture. Um, okay, I want the Wikipedia. Then I want that. Then I want that. There we go. Well, let me see here. I'll see if I can, uh, I can bring this up and you can, uh, you, you may well, uh, you can't see it. Because I, I, but oh, I'll show I it. I'll show it to the audience and you guys. If you're looking, if you can see the, the picture, uh, I'll um, let me see here. Where is it? Computer. Where's computer? Where's computer here? I'm trying to, to find a, a way to, bring this up and I don't see it here. Hold on. Got to use my glasses. Oh, we don't have Phil to talk about the, uh, the half hour of. Uh conspiracy theories and stuff yeah he's at the photoshop wait today. a minute i'm trying that's to what he, that's the excuse he uses he's really at a carpet knitting class <laughs> is he really oh man he's yeah he's funny. at a carpet knitting class right right think about right. raquel Walsh. she still looked good when she was older oh okay. absolutely well, she, he... i don't know if she did fillers or whatever but if she did she didn't like overdo it. Okay, well, this is the best I could come up with here. Hold on a second, folks. Uh, let me see here. There's Ursula Andrus as uh, in in uh, Doctor No. Uh, that that's that's uh, I think better than Raquel Welch in a fur bikini. But you people can't see it, so I'm just showing it to my audience. Okay, and uh, back to you guys. All right.
Hmm. Anyway, it, 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 you'll see it come up on your screen in a couple of couple of seconds. But she was she was a you know I liked her as Landris better, but it's just me. Uh, and um, oh. let's see here. But Raquel Welch, I never felt she was very much of an actress. You know, she wasn't terrific. Hi, Ke uh, hi, Kevin. How are you tonight? Okay, how are yourself? Alex? Yeah, good. I was watching one of your bands marching yesterday on YouTube. Oh yeah. Nah, I just they you know it has a scroll, and then you your your video was there, so I stopped and watched it. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it must have been a fairly old one. How many videos do you have up now? I don't know. I don't really don't know. <clears throat> yeah. There's yeah. probably I don't know thirty or forty of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I uh, um, I wish They're I could. In the percussion now, now it's all percussion stuff. Yeah. I see these people that have like you know nine thousand, uh, you know ten uh, rather uh, uh, a million views, million and a half views, and I go, how do you do that? How do they? How do they? How do people find out these people even exist? You know, um, there's this guy I watch who find, he finds like, this is the smallest apartment in New York City. And he takes you on a tour of the neighborhood and then he shows you the apartment and the rent is like $1,500 a month and it's a shoebox, all right? And he gets a million views. Wow, just to show his apartment? Not his apartment, an apartment. And he does six of these a week, okay? And, and most of them on the average have about a quarter of a million views. I mean, the guy's making like six grand a week just off his YouTube videos. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. There's real money in that. And there's, there this, is, yeah. there's this girl, and she plays the uh, the violin. She's a violinist. She's from, the U from Ukraine, and she's 14 years old oh. and, and really cute, okay? And um, she plays the violin, and she plays it incredibly i mean she's an incredible violinist and i know what an incredible violinist is because my father was a violinist and i learned what good violin was and bad violin this girl on one video she got something like 20 million views do you know how much that is at four thousand dollars a million they clean it up yeah one video one video one video so you know hopefully I yeah, I'm still I guess Taylor money. Swift is really cleaning up then, because she's had a video that was over one billion views on YouTube. Yeah. Well, you know that's why these TV shows like Kimmel and so on put their monologues up there, mm -hmm. and Fallon and so on. Oh yeah. Because the networks make money out of that, you know. Uh, so I mean, there's there's a lot of money in YouTube, and YouTube doesn't pay well if you think about the percentages. But they and they don't pay well, but they pay good enough that if you got a million views to one video, you'll get four thousand dollars. So I'm just figuring out what do I have to do before I drop dead that I can get a million views and get that four thousand dollars. And then they'll probably demonetize me. You know. <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff. If I'm correct about this. Uh Young, Can you talk young, a little louder? Somebody the other day was saying you weren't or, talking loud enough. Uh, did you um, did you hear about this lady in? You're New talking. York you're recently? still. You're talking very quietly. Wow. I had a, a justice thing. Yeah. Well. Anyway, get closer to your microphone. How's that sound better? A little better. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, so I think my my son went to lunch with her the other day. Who? Raquel Welch. Talk to that lady. What's the, uh, the the lady was the, uh, playing? The violinist. The violinist. No, she lives in California. Maybe talked to her just the other day. Huh? He's in that business, you know. Really? Well, yeah. well where does he live? In New York. And and how was he talking to her by phone or something? Or? I don't know. Why was he talking to her? Hey, well, you know, he's in the music business, so he tries to give people to uh, 
play certain things with uh, the music because they own the music. Oh, okay. She, he wanted, wants, gets people to do their music. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, is she, is she, if if it's the girl I'm thinking of, I think so. Uh, you know, she's amazing. She's an amazing violinist. Yeah, but there's, I mean, there's another one called the Hot Violinist that does uh, medieval songs on the violin or whatever. The Hot Violinist. Well, I know that one too. She's uh, yeah. she, she's. Uh, I'm trying to remember her name now, and she does these really complicated and really produced videos, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's one she did like in an ice palace or something where it's all frozen and so on. And she dances around and was kind of an influence for this Ukrainian girl who dances around too. And uh, uh, they've done some videos with each other. Uh, it, it, well, that but it sounds hot. It, what do you mean it sounds hot? This girl is 14. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I don't know. I the missed that part. I thought you were talking about Raquel Welch still. <laughs> yeah, Raquel Welch, one of the finest violinists of our time. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. Boy, could she play a fiddle. <laughs> play a flute. You, you know, it, if, you, if you want to participate in the show, why don't you listen to it? Yeah, I guess I'll have to. Yeah, you know. But anyway, so I, you know, what do I have to do to get make some money out of this? Let's see here. Right now, I've got forty people watching. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, you know how much I'm going to make out of that? Seven dollars. No, less than that. About a buck. Really? Well, yeah. Tony, yeah. get all your Italian friends to watch. In the last twenty eight days, I made fifteen dollars. Well, and you probably get taxed on it. Oh yeah, and I have to report it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but uh, anyway, so. Yeah. Well, what's going on with uh, Jack? Speaking of reporting things, he's uh, having more problems. Is he okay? Well, last week he went on every night, posted the show, and it it worked fine. Worked. No problem. Every night. This week, he uh, can't get arrested. Oh. You know. Uh, first, the other night he had a problem, and I'm trying to remember what the problem was on Monday night. And I find we finally got him on at midnight. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I sent the message around. You but then me. last night he couldn't get on, and I had to go on to his machine and I had to correct something in order to make it work. But by the time I got it working, it was like 20 of midnight, and I told him, you know, you you have no way to tell the people to call you at midnight. So we just better not do it at all, you know, and just do it tonight. So let's see if if it works tonight. But I, should, I, I got him up. Like, I got him up and running. However, good. Huh? It seems like most of his technical problems are on Monday and Tuesday. It seems like he it, it works fine right after your show, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's weird. I don't know. I don't think so. But you may be right. You know. Yeah. But I mean, I just, he just, uh, yeah, so last night he had a problem and the problem had to do with the fact that he lost his connection to his audio board. He's got this weird off-brand audio board that I never heard of called a Zoom. Not Zoom like this, but Zoom. And it, um, it, it keeps going out. It is uh, so... I had him last night. I had that we finally solved the problem by having it unplug it and then plug it back in, and all of a sudden it showed up as a source for audio. What What does uh, a video board cost? Well, you can pay. I paid. What did I pay for mine? About four hundred bucks, something like that, for mine. You know, but this thing is. Uh, it's a. Uh, you know it. I mean, I've read about it, and they seem to work okay. But it, he, for some reason, it it. It's something I think you have to know a little bit more about computers to deal with because it's a little more finicky, all right? Yeah. So that's what happened to Jack for the last couple of nights. That and uh, what happened on Monday, uh, oh, on Monday his big problem was uh, he wound up going to the hospital again, to yep. the emergency room, because yep. he had another emergency. So uh, An allergic attack from what we don't know. I have no idea. Have no idea, you know. Either, but uh, 
uh, hopefully he will be on tonight. You know, his his uh, his oh. internet was down, but now it's been it's up supposedly. What are you going to say? Yeah, Charlie. I was just saying, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, I I admire like you and Charlie because you call him. And uh, you stick with him in spite of all of these problems, you know. But I mean, I I don't know how he he's, he can keep an audience in general with yeah. being off this uh, often, you know. And uh, it, it's uh, you know. And last night I'm having my dinner party, and he calls me in the middle of the dinner party. I got problems, and my <laughs> internet is down. Yeah, oh, goodbye. Well. You know, talk yeah, to the hand. I said I'm 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 in the middle of a dinner party here, you know. Uh, s s try and solve the problem. He says, oh, my internet is down. Well, I don't think it was down, actually. He just thought it was because he couldn't get you guys on. Well, he actually could, got on. Yeah. And you couldn't get your could hear him, but We you, raised our yeah. hand. He couldn't hear us. That because the, because the, input, the input from that Zoom audio wasn't getting to the output into... Uh, the uh, encoder for the show, okay, wow. or into um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, into uh, Skype uh, because it just didn't come up. The, you know, you, it, you have to have it. Uh, you have to have the machine, the Zoom, or the the you know the the board that you're using come up, and it has yep. to be recognized by your system. Well, it wasn't recognizing it because for some reason some glitch happened. And it wasn't registering, so by unplugging and plugging it back in, we finally saw it come up, and you could... I, I got him going last night. Good. We'll check him out tonight. You know, I think uh, tonight, if he has problems, I'm just not answering my phone, okay? You know, I don't want to be mean, but I, and I love him, but God, you know, every, every night it's something else, you know? Mm -hmm. But last week, it was like smooth, easy-peasy. Why he doesn't get on Zoom, you know? Um, he can get on Zoom. No, to Zoom, talk it, to begin himself. with, there are several reasons why he's not on Zoom. Number one, I don't want to have him have to learn something else. Forget it, okay? Yeah, okay. Secondly, secondly, uh, if he uses Zoom, he has to use my account, which means oh. he has to sign on after I sign off. And it's too complicated, unless we have a second Zoom account. If he wants to pay for his own Zoom account, then we'll do it. You know, and, but Zoom is, he would have had the same problem with Zoom because yeah, you yeah. have to tell Zoom where your audio is coming from. And if it doesn't come up, you know, so that's a problem that I had with him last night. Okay. Um, but, you know, so whatever. So anything in the news anybody wants to talk about? Let's think. Did anybody see Nikki Haley speech? Oh, yeah. I think she's running, right? Isn't that what Phil likes that too? I think no. Well, yeah, that's why she yeah, had a speech. Running, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I was sitting there. And I was watching her give a speech, and I said to Marjorie, "I said, you know, she's probably a good idea for a candidate for the Republicans. She's, she's good looking. She's presentable. She speaks well. You know, and and uh, she seems to be just hitting all the right notes. You know, and then all of a sudden, she went into." But Joe Biden is the worst president we've ever had, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, you just lost me. You know, if she could stick to positive politics, you know, to say what she's going to do for the country and what, what she can bring about in the country and not sit there and put down her opponent and to put down Joe Biden. Just lay off of that, you know? Um, have you heard us talk at all, Kevin? Nikki Haley? I did not. No, I've been kind of away from the news the last few days. Yeah, yeah. Anybody see her at all? I, I heard that. I yeah. Her. It was Which, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was okay in the beginning when she was very positive. We're going to make America, you know, America has promise and we can do something about it and we can bring this country together and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And then Joe Biden's a jerk. You know, I, it just, that's when she lost me. And she probably lost a great deal of people who said, well, maybe she's worth listening to, you know? 
But all of a sudden, she went into that same toilet every Republican goes into. Yep. Yeah, they never say what they're going to do to help people because they don't have any plans to help people. Oh, they have no plans to help people. That's right. They don't even care about helping people. No. You know. Um, but, I mean, I think a, a Republican who has a positive message and doesn't do any bad-mouthing of anybody else, even the people that are, person that's running against them, I think has a good shot. But... I thought she could be the one, and then all of a sudden she starts going into bashing uh, Biden. You know, we know you don't like Biden. We know, because you're a Republican. Republicans don't like Biden. But don't go in, the, don't go there. Go somewhere else. You know, tell us what you're going to do for us. That's right. You know, sell yourself to us. And yep. I think that's what politicians should do. They spend way, this whole negative ads, when, you, when the, finally we start getting ads for, you know, the presidential race that's coming up, it's not even, it's too soon. But anyway, <clears throat> when we finally get all those ads, they're all going to be negative ads. I want to see ads where somebody says, Here, here's what I'm going to do. Here's, here's what I think needs changing, and here's how I'm going to change it. I'd vote for them. I'd vote for them if they were a Republican, you know? Uh, but a negative, a negative campaigning is just, I'm sick of it. So. Anyway. Um, our former president, who well, I'll leave nameless. Wait a minute, uh, you got your uh, list there? Uh, uh, well, I, uh, I didn't say, I didn't there say. There we that. go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't say. I, uh, we'll call him 45. No, you brought him up anyway. Even by uh -huh. inference counts. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh. Trump said today that he was looking at maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene for a running mate. Oh, oh I think Fox hit the roof. God, I couldn't. I heard it on Fox News. I don't know why I was on Fox yeah, News. You on Fox I, News? Oh my God! I listen to it once in a while. Well, you know, I listen I'm, to you once in a while too, Tony. You're I'm, a lot more entertaining, though. Yeah. Uh, Trump is not going to get the nomination. God, I certainly oh, hope not. I, I wouldn't even begin to. In, you know, think of that. I just don't think he has a chance. You know, I think the American public is tired of him. We're ex not just me because I'm on the left, but the people who are right wingers, they're exhausted too with Donald Trump. You know, they, uh, Donald Trump is not new and fresh to them. Plus, you know, I mean, yes, you, if you complain about Biden being too old to be president, I mean, he's the oldest president we've ever had. And he's going to be 82 when he runs for president again. Trump's not too far behind. Him. Well, and Trump's not too far behind. I mean, I think the Republicans should find themselves somebody young. Nikki Haley's not a bad idea because she's younger. But then she also started bashing older people. Not... She started saying, oh, well, we're tired of, of Washington being full of all these old people. Well, you don't she do doesn't that. realize that, that a lot of retired people have nothing better to do than go out and, and vote and vote exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then she, do you know her parents are Indian? Yeah, really? not American Indian, Indian Indian. I, yeah. I didn't oh. know that. Yep. And she doesn't look it, does she? No. no. Yeah, she does look a little bit. Really? Remember the other one lied? They said. She lied about her heritage or something. You're thinking of Santos. Oh, he never tells the truth. That you, you, every day I'm listening to 1010 wins. There's another lie out of his mouth. They pull up. Oh yeah. This guy's amazing. I mean, he's never told anything honest. Well, he's a mythical human being. I think that's wonderful. We all like mythical human <laughs> beings. Yeah. I mean, it's like every, I can't. I can't get over this guy. I realize like this guy's total fraud. Yeah. Yeah. And the Republicans won't believe it. The politician never tells the truth. <laughs> no, no. You know, but I mean, um, uh, I th I just think that uh, that that we need some people campaigning who just sell themselves to the public. You know, the, the sales job is you, uh, and and tell all your people who might want to do ads, uh, you know, these pack groups and so on, and do negative ads to knock it off. Just no negative ads. Just run on, on who you are and what you're going to do. Sell yourself to us. 
and I think that would be the perfect uh, perfect thing. I'd be I, I'd vote for a Republican if he if he campaigned that way, you know. But depends in, on what he's gonna do. Huh? It depends on what he says he's gonna do. Yeah, but but I think I'm dreaming, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. And that's not to say Democrats don't do negative advertising too. Yeah. But uh, uh, not quite as nasty. You know, I mean, Trump brought up the level of discourse to an ugly level. Well, by the way, you can hold the, the thing up. I said Trump, too. So, you know, <laughs> um, what are some of the other things that you say he says? He brings up a uh, you... uh, Jewish remark. Yeah, uh, yeah, a Jewish remark. Yeah. Mar-a-Lago and Republican. Hmm. Did he mention Mar-a-Lago tonight? No. No. Hmm. Okay. Um, are there are only four of those things that you have on your list. Yep. Oh. Bill just sent me a text. He got first place in his knitting group. Oh, really? Beating up the old guys. He can't. He goes to this better. photo. He goes to these photo group. This it's photo, photo group, and they all compete with photographs, and they're all just old guys. Okay. And he beats up on them with his photos. That's kind of sad, no? I mean, let him win. That's the only thing they look And forward. also the photos he, he he puts in there are stuff he took 50 years ago. It's not <laughs> stuff he took yesterday. You know, there should be a limit. They should say, oh, well, all photographs that are submitted should be photographs that were taken this year. You know. <laughs> but, you know. I mean, when was the last time he went scuba diving and swam with the sharks, right? You know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of dangerous for him, no? Huh? That's kind of dangerous. I don't think well, he can do that. you know, I mean, well, let me put it this way. I mean, if a shark wants to eat somebody, they're going to eat the fat one, right? <laughs> it's a his dinner. <laughs> that's why I stay out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you remember that ad? There was a there was a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a gym, a, you know, health spa. What is he? What is he? A place you work out. Yeah, a gym, health spa. Gym, health spa, whatever. That had an ad, and they had billboards all over town with this ad. And I I I thought it was great. It it just said, uh, if the aliens come, they're going to eat the fat ones first. <laughs> yeah. That is funny. Everybody lose weight. And they got so much heat for those ads. You know. <laughs> and I went, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty that good. good. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so I want to be thin. <laughs> yeah. Uh let me see here. What else was, was going on in the news? There were a couple other things that I saw. Balloons? I, Any more balloons? Oh shopping? God. Yeah. 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 The target practice, no. Yeah, really. Well, apparently, th apparently the one over Michigan or something, they one of the missiles fired and missed. They, they're not talking about where the missile ended up going. Well, if, if a couple of them, like the one that was over Michigan, I think they described That's the the, air, the guys flying the jets were describing as small. So even right. if you've got a missile, if it's small, you can miss it. Oh, and by the way, where did that missile land? That's what I just said. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're not telling us where it landed. Well, I the, the thing is that the, it it's uh, it's really questionable about all of that, uh, and and what bothers me the most is there are a few things they could have done instead of shooting them down. Okay, to begin with, they do have kind of hooks that you can put on jets that could like grab the thing, right? And then just bring it to gr the ground, yeah, and yeah. and then look it over and see what's working and what what isn't working and so on and so forth. But when you shoot it down over water and it gets obliterated, there's very little for you to to find out, you know. So I mean, they should have they just handled this all wrong and they and they went way overboard on how panicked they were about it. They said. Oh, well, you know, they went over a lot of military bases. Well, it wasn't because the Chinese told it to go over military bases. It was following the wind streams, the air streams. Well, do the air streams... Huh? Phil, Phil, Phil knows very little about missiles either. Uh, it went over Lake Huron, mm -hmm. not Lake Michigan, which 
I'm oh. not sure. Okay. Who's right. He says matter. the missile landed, quote unquote. Missiles don't land. I got news for you, Phil. He's listening to the show right now. Tomorrow is his night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I can't be here. No, oh, okay. But no, yeah. but but uh, you, you know, I mean, it was. Um, uh, it just it's so ridiculous. I mean, I see the head of of the army and navy and whatever. I don't know. He getting up there and going, oh well, these missiles, you know, they could be dangerous and they could be checking out our mill. There, these are. At what point are they spy balloons and they morphed from weather balloon? You Next know. they're going to see the UFO, so I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> well, you know, God forbid they should shoot down one of these things, and it is a UFO. That would be great. Imagine an alien comes popping out. <laughs> and those, you know, the last thing you want to do is get those aliens pissed at us, you know? Look, it's an alien with slant, slanty eyes. He's shiny. <laughs> what did you oh. just say? God <laughs> damn, are you racist or what? Yeah. Oh, come on. I'm from New York. I, 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 what do you mean? Okay. New York? There, there are a lot of Chinese who live in New York. In fact, they live quite near you. A lot. I'm telling you. I feel like I'm a... Uh, they're in, uh, they live in Flushing, which has now been renamed. I, Flute, which I mean, I like them and all, but they... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. They don't yeah. really... They're not neighborly people. I have to say that. I try to say hello to my neighbors. Oh, man. Bill oh, has man. corrected himself here. He says it landed in the lake. It did? I said, send pictures. Yeah. And then next week, show them at your photo thing. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, so, I mean, that whole story is, is it's like you t every time you turn it on, you know. And then today, there was, a, you know, this guy who shot up all these black people in Buffalo, I think it was. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Yeah, he got sentenced to life in prison without oh, possibility yeah. of parole. And he can Good. still be charged under a federal statute, in which case he could to get the death penalty. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but as he was, he gave his apology. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, I, 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 it was I, an accident? No, he, he just said it was out of his hatred for black people or something. I don't know. Anyway, he gets finished giving his speech, and one of the people who is getting up to talk about you know why he should be sent away forever and one of the people whose relative was killed at this guy's hand um, um, suddenly gets up and runs at him to attack him and they had to rush him out of there in his little orange jumpsuit I mean uh, it, it, these people were really they wanted to kill him right then and there, you know. Not the first time. I mean, it was a hate crime. There was no question about it, you know. Yep. The guy even admits it was a hate crime. So. Yep. You know. I've seen families charge at people before in court. Now, here's a black guy, okay, a rather a white guy, white racist, who killed eight black people, who's now going to prison. Oh, How God. long do you think he's going to last? Jeez. I don't know what the over and under that's. Well, gonna... they'll, they'll give him a better uh, a better prison, you know. Uh, Alex, he's got to paint himself black if he's going to survive. Well, that's they might. Well, but that's what segregation's <laughs> for, Tony. They're going to they kill him. They right they won't put him. him with all the other blacks. They might segregate him. <laughs> Funny, a black racist getting segregated. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, he he may be segregated. But I don't think that's going to help much. I mean, this guy's got yeah. life in prison. There's a lot of time to get this guy. That's Jeffrey a good question. Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer had life in prison, and somebody white killed him. Yeah, 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 in absolutely. Prison. What were you going to say, Charlie? Uh, 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 yeah, that's Tom. a good question. I wonder when these the lawyers for these for these criminals, can they, like, once he gets, like, the sentence, I wonder if they can go to the to the jail system and say, listen, can we just put him in by himself? I wonder if they can do that. Well, they no, they they put him in a thing that's called ad seg or something like that. I don't know what it means. It's a segregated... Uh, administrative segregation. Administrative segregation. Uh, and they put a lot of people who are would be terribly unpopular in that group. Oh, you know. Yeah. I, you know, this is going to come as a shock, but, it, you know, people that are sentenced to prison, 
the mm -hmm. sheriff's department or the department of corrections or whoever they're responsible to keep them safe yeah yeah mm -hmm. but here's and that, that and, and so we used to call it protective custody where you mm -hmm. took somebody that was at high risk of being stabbed or killed in general population and we would move them to but here's and, somebody who's in his early 20s who's going to spend the rest of his life in prison oh, you, you know to have to keep an eye on him for the rest of his life going to cost us the taxpayers going to cost a fortune yeah but that, that probably the government will charge him find him guilty and sentence him to death um so, seven huh seven people well here in new york they they were i think they were getting ready to sentence somebody to death for a federal crime yeah there's, there's it was no committed here in new york anymore. what there's no death penalty in new york not in new york and I don't, I don't believe in the death penalty anyway. So I'm not going to say, oh, we should, you know, fry him or do whatever they do. I believe in G an eye for an eye. Well, I, I just don't know that that's. I don't know that it's the right answer, but it is an answer. Well, eye in, for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Uh, right. I don't, I don't know if that necessarily applies. You know. I, I don't I mean, think it's a deterrent that the death penalty. I mean. The death penalty in some of the states. Look at Texas. They kill well, people well, all the time. Let me ask you this question. What kind of favor are you doing this guy by putting him away for the rest of his life? Wouldn't you be doing him more of a favor by killing him? I would think so. You know? Right. I mean, what, what what's he got to gonna do? He's going to spend the rest of his life in a prison. Period. Yeah. That's it. Three, three That's square cool. meals in a cot. Yeah. All but, I mean, taxpayers' expense. But you don't have any kind of freedoms, you know. It's not like uh, uh, the. You see, I often believed in the, in a prison farm system, where we don't have prisons; we have prison farms, and yeah, it, it, yeah and people can get rehabilitated in a situation like that. But they're never going to get rehabilitated in a prison, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, this guy killed eight people, but isn't right. there some point in his life? Where he's not the same guy anymore. That is a good point because you know that's right. He'll find God, and that's that's everything. Well, forget about finding God. He just won't be the same person when he gets to be forty. He'll say, "What did I do? You know, I really Gee. fucked up." I mean, if you let him out the next day, he would never kill another person. But that's we don't take that into consideration. That's why a lot of other countries are a lot more decent about that and don't exactly sentence people to you know life in prison or whatever there is a way out if you are redemptive so anyway hey listen there's that theme song uh oh. and uh, it's time to go charlie wallace so good to have you here always good having you here one time i wanted instead of phil do you for <laughs> no for the first 25 minutes i got a lot of stuff to ask you you're, I vote on that. You're, Let's do you're, that. You're a very bright guy. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, not, not next week because Phil doesn't have his beat up on the old people club. Uh, but the week afterwards, maybe we'll do He's that. He's going to be swimming looking and for then, missiles. Yeah. Then you, ha you have to equal it out and then do one half hour of Tony. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tony on coffee. Yeah, I had a cup. I'm saying well, just, Tony just is let him muted. go. Just yeah. let him talk. See how long he'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, going on comic books. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Brian. Thank you, Jeff. Good seeing you still in Florida. She's down there in Florida. I know. Enjoy yeah. The, yeah. The warm weather. Yeah. And Tony, thank you so much. Thank you, <laughs> Alan. We appreciate it. And uh, Kevin, always nice to see your little beard here. Uh, and uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop, hopefully, keep your fingers, keep your big pinkies crossed, is supposed to be here next uh, with, the, uh, with the intersection. He'll uh, be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. In the meantime, I will see you again uh, here uh, tomorrow night. Uh, 10.30 Eastern Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, please tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. <laughs>